Do you ever wake up in the morning with 11.53% mental capacity and ask yourself, what can I do today that doesn't require me to be smart or energetic or functional? Should I do a video about The Incredibles? No, I don't have the mental capacity to talk about how The Incredibles proves wrong all the people who say watching married superheroes wouldn't be interesting. How about melting my mind watching an infamous fever dream? That I can do. Thumbelina is a film from Don Bluth who has a mixed history with animation. He's the guy who made The Land Before Time, Secret of Nim, a few other horrifying classics that everybody loves for how scary they are. But he's also made some films that are... I think the correct way to put it would be gobbledygook plus. Okay, this does look pretty advanced for the times. That's clearly 3D, but they made it look like it belongs in the same world as this 2D animation. Swallow extraordinary and lover of beautiful things. I'm guessing he finds all the ugly people and pecks at them. I love great romances. He says he likes great romances. What does that have to do with this film? Oh, he thinks that this is a great ro oh, okay, uh, now I get it. But the most impossible of all the stories is impossibly small. I was about to be mad at him comparing this film to those literary classics, but his claim was that this is one of the most impossible of them all, and I can't deny that. <laughs> How convenient that she's instantly an adult who knows who her mother is. I think that this singing is supposed to be bad because how could you possibly think that this was good? Being self-aware about how bad the singing is doesn't make it good singing. I mean, they're not doing it in such a way where it's funny, so it's just bad singing. I'll probably just mute this entire song because it's so ear-bleeding. So how does Thumbelina feel about the sentient animals that she can talk to and sing with being prepared to be eaten? The fairy prince and princess are having a wedding. I, I suppose it, it, it works best if, uh, if, if two people are about the same size. What kind of moral of the story is that? Plenty of skinny people marry fat people. Plenty of tall people marry short people. Size doesn't matter, you gibberish movie. She says it only works if they're the same size. Get creative, why don't you? If I met a nice girl who was only this big, what I would do is- You don't want to know what this sick man said after that. That looks exactly like the effects that the pixie dust had on their ship at the end of Peter Pan. Who are you waving to? The pumpkins need to be acknowledged oh, too. But our son is missing again. I think he feels a bit silly riding that white butterfly we gave him. No, he just feels silly about waving at people when there's no one there. Have you forgotten what it's like to be 16? Don't they get married in this movie? He's gonna get married at 16? Well, at least he wasn't born yesterday like Thumbelina could have been. You jerk, you cut a hole in my book. That was the only book that has representation for people my size and you ruined it. There, see? No more sword. That's not what no more sword looks like. He has his hand on it right now. I thought I was the only one my size in the whole world. It's so nice to finally meet people like me. I'm nothing like you, you wingless freak. I don't know where wingless fairies come from, but go back there. I'm Cornelius. Cornelius. <laughs> well, that's a funny name. Well, I'll give her this. She's easy to please. Who needs to think of clever jokes when you can just read a baby name book to her? Good evening, ladies and gents. Is <laughs> where you are. Stay with me. Mom, I love her. Is it even possible to fall in love with someone while they're singing a romance song with someone else? Oh, I'll never forget you. Never. He also said he would never let her fall right when he was letting her fall.
I'll never forget you. Who are you and what are you doing with my ring? Cornelius. Cornelius. Cornelius, these pumpkins are not going to wave at themselves. The squashes are beginning to talk. We'll live happily ever after. Oh, much longer. The more I think about it, the more I realize that opening with uh, them comparing this story to such works as Romeo and Juliet was kind of accurate. They just met and already they want to get married, even though one of them is 16 and the other one is possibly a few days old. I get that age is just a number, but miles per hour is more than just a number. I bring you here to become a famous singer like me. And the soap is always boiling. <laughs> A lot of people have probably criticized this film for not being politically correct. This film hasn't done enough good stuff for me to defend it, so you you can hate away this time. If some people want to call this blackface, again, I can't be bothered to make counter-arguments this time. You go ahead. What fairy prince? The one that had a romantic song and dance with Thumbelina right in front of you. Oh, Mr. Bean! I don't even know you! <laughs> she wants to marry someone she's had a few minutes of interaction with who broke into her house, cut open her book, and then took her for a joyride where he nearly dropped her to her death. She has no self-awareness. When she said that she barely knows this guy, that should have been a wake-up call for her. Well, this movie is getting me to laugh sometimes. It might not be for its intended reasons, but it's getting me to laugh. I'm sorry, Toots! I guess you're too... You'll get over me. He thought that she was hot before, and he knew that she didn't have any wings or any of that other stuff. I guess he just wants to have everyone else's opinion so he'll fit in and not feel like an idiot. You ever watch a movie and kind of like it, and then everyone else hates it, and then you think, well, maybe I should hate it then. The wiser choice is to just call it a guilty pleasure. I am looking for the veil of the spray. You might be thinking, if the fox is just trying to eat something, why doesn't he chew up the bird? But knowing this movie, you know what this is really about. You know the real reason he's chasing the bunny. <laughs> Some fairy prince he turned out to be can't last one day in winter. Oh, mother, where can you be? I'd say that the mother has a very good excuse for just staying home. She's an old lady surrounded by weather harsh enough to turn a lake into ice in a matter of seconds. And Thumbelina is proportionately a needle in a haystack. If I was her, I'd say, well, if she's still alive, I'm not going to be able to find her. She loves her daughter so much. Think about it, everyone else loves her after knowing her for two minutes. She interacted with Thumbelina for a whole day. Cornelius was the only one. Yeah. The only one who what? The only one who what? The only guy who won what's best for her and could also fly, that's also the bird. Persuade Miss Thumbelina to, 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 to be, be my wife. Leave the arrangements to me. The mouse should have haggled more. She took one coin. She was hoping to marry the mole herself and share the whole fortune. Is that one coin really not a disappointment? People talk about how Disney changed the ending of The Little Mermaid. Well... This is what happens when you have a faithful adaptation of a fairy tale. Thumbelina finding a series of animals who just met her and want to marry her, but she doesn't want to marry them because she wants to marry the fairy that she just met. That's exactly what happened in the original version of Thumbelina. L is for money. Oh, L E. Perhaps I should marry the mole. Thumbelina is so susceptible to pressure. If it's really that easy to brainwash her, maybe she lacks the mental maturity it takes to get married to the prince. I love to imagine what would really happen in this scenario. His dead body would fall onto the fire while the children smile at him, waiting for him to get up. This sick man. Do you take this uh, mole to be your lawful wedded uh, husband? Never.
What? You know, you could have told me that before we invited all these guests and wasted my time and put up all these decorations and set up the reception with all the food. I can't believe I spent a whole coin on that girl. Please, can you take me home? <gasps> Sing! This bird whose demands that she sings when she wants to go home is so different from the mouse and mole who told her to sing when she wanted to go home. And the fairy prince who showed up to stop the wedding because he wants to marry Thumbelina is so different from the frog who showed up to stop the wedding because he wants to marry Thumbelina. This film is so clear on the behavioral patterns that separate good from evil. Let's be practical. This isn't the Vale of the Fairies, and Cornelius is never coming back. And I'll never let you fall. And the moral of the story is, don't think about practicality. Wings. Did true love's kiss wings. sprout the wings? My what? When you're doing a true love's kiss breaks the spell sort of thing, you have to actually specify that that's how it works beforehand. Otherwise, you end up with gobbledygook plus. To be fair, it doesn't look like it's winter anymore, so they probably knew each other for a while before getting married. They lived happily ever after. Are you sure they lived happily ever after? In this world, they live in every time you take two steps, there's someone who wants to marry you and will kidnap you to do it. Seems like they've got a long way to go before this place becomes livable. Look what it recommends to you after you watch Thumbelina. You must have the mind of a five-year-old to have watched that. It's kind of one of those stories where you have a bunch of guys fighting over the girl, and the solution is for the guy she happens to have actually wanted to marry be the one to win the battle. I say it's kind of like that because she did do her own escape. So it wasn't like Aladdin versus Jafar where the guy she wanted to marry just happened to be the guy who won the fight. And I did laugh watching this movie. I didn't think I would have two positives to rub together. But don't get it twisted, that was a very poorly constructed script. Up until the end of the film, Thumbelina is frustratingly easy to manipulate. The prince has barely any personality, and he doesn't have much time spent with Thumbelina to build the relationship, which is supposed to be so important to the plot. The massive plot conveniences don't make any sense, and major plot points demand explanation but get none. It's not a great film, but it is a great film to make fun of. Just remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and not marry a mole or a frog or a beetle.